We came via Midlane Park Baptist uh, merger in 2010. Yeah, we came over. We came over from uh, Midlane Park, and at the time, we were down to about 30 people in service at uh, at Midlane, and uh, we were really struggling as a congregation. It was uh, we were at the end of the rope there. Uh, so when did you come to Midlane? Ninety-seven. What brought you there? Um, probably the Hagers. Wayne the Hagers, Hager. yeah. Wayne Hager. We His wife was our Sunday school teacher at uh, downtown Wallet Street. Wallet Street. Wallet yeah. Street. And so. And she uh, happened to mention that he was preaching out this way. And of course, we lived out this way. So. Um, and uh, she was the minister of social ministries mm -hmm. there at Wallet at Street. Wallet Street. Yeah. And so we, we checked it out and decided to come closer to something closer to home. But I do remember walking, we live very, very close, and I remember walking, our, I saw somebody roll a stroller down past the church, and I thought, I wonder what's back there. So I walked my dog back there and found that walking track back there. So, you know, we... We frequented the property. Yeah, uh, we had frequented the property before. Yeah, for we even quite a while, part yeah. of it. And it's been a very convenient place for us um, since we lived so close. Well, I think that Bible up there may have come from Middle Lane. Yeah, I think it did. It did. It the Bible be, there did come from Middle Lane. Could be that it did. Could be that it did. Yeah, it did. It did. The cross that we have. Uh, every time I see that cross, it's going to remind me of John Lennon. Mm -hmm. Which cross? Uh, the cross that we use at. Uh, Is it at Easter? Time? At Easter. Oh, that goes out front. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's a beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we were one of the younger people that came over. Uh, young mm -hmm. couple that, that came over. Uh, yeah. You still have Susie Clifton and uh, and uh, the singers. And Trish Singer. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course Brenda, our organist, uh, pianist, for, came for over for a little while. Yeah. It was a very. We were the integration into the church here was almost seamless I didn't. Yes, yes. Everybody in fact, was. for the people from Midlane, I must say that we, we felt relieved mm -hmm. that we were there was a congregation to receive us. A congregational uh, life itself, I think, uh, it was has been uh, something that we we, we value. Uh, it, we got together with in two thousand nine for the Christmas program between the Mid Lake Choir and the Mutual Park, Park Choir. And I show up and there's this loud tenor, and I'm a loud tenor too. And so we were sparking a little bit, it was Greg Caudill. And he goes, where do you live? We mentioned we had walked. Yeah, I think I knew that house. I think I grew up in that house. <laughs> <laughs> so here we were, here we were, uh, Talking, to, so I talked to him a little bit about his experience growing up there, and uh, among other things, we found his dad's navy cap up in the, up in the the attic. Yeah, up in a little area that goes up into the attic. Yeah. The other thing that's funny is our personalities are so much alike in so many ways. It's uh, he refers to me as. I refer to myself as Greg Minor and to him as Greg Major. <laughs> well, he talks about you as brother, being yeah, his brother yeah. a lot. So we, we, uh, uh, but we have remarkably similar outlooks. I don't know if, I don't know. It didn't have anything to do with the chemistry of the house, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at the names, or I was looking at the names of people. Tharps, definitely, I think everybody remembers. One thing I remember about them was Howard would remember our names, and I was thinking, gosh, I don't remember a lot of the names of the people. You know, I remember yeah. wearing name tags at first. Well, a story I wanted to share real quickly about Mildred Tharp is we went to uh, Ken um, Kentucky Fried Chicken one Sunday after church to get some chicken, and she saw us, and she says, 
do you all have someone to eat that with? <laughs> it just kind of shows how uh, welcoming the Tharps were to everybody. Yeah, very sweet lady. Maria Humphreys was uh, a colorful personality too. She always had a had a uh, point of view, and she could articulate it quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember making some statements about the separation of church and state. Uh, it was, it was, uh, she was very uh, vigorous in, in stating her point of view. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember a lot of the pillars in the church. Um, I guess you'd call them the pillars in the church. I that was looking at that directory from 2011 or 12, and uh, the Vogels stand out. Um, the Blazers, um, the Yeltons. I remember Mike Yelton come over to our church when we were trying to dismantle Mid Lane Park uh, as far as, you know, furnishings, uh, other things that we'd uh, Accumulate. accumulated. And the library, I remember him coming and helping us dispose of the books in the library. And uh, I remember he, and I remember everybody talking about Mark, Mike Yelton's Sunday school class <laughs> because he he had a, the biggest Sunday school class here. Yeah, he had yeah. about I think they had about forty people in the Sunday school class yeah. at that time, which was was uh, pretty pretty robust. Uh, and then of course we brought some people that were pillars too here, the Gattons and the Metters, um, Kitty and Larry Coates. Yeah. Uh, but the Condrens. Yes, John and John Sarah. John yeah. and Sarah. John was a pillar. John was the one that was holding things together when we finally did the merger. I think I would say it's, it's important not to always think you're right about everything. You have to compromise at times. And uh, get along with people, you know? <laughs> the church is always living in perilous times. We're, we're never more than one generation from going out of existence. Uh, but in these times right now, we feel a special peril, you know, following the pandemic and the growth of uh, hostility among younger people to organized religion. Uh, but the church has always lived in perilous times. Each generation has to, has to face the challenges that, that are before it. Nothing, ever, nothing is ever settled. It just takes an ongoing commitment and an ongoing uh, walk of faith. Uh, from Habakkuk, I love the image of the prophet saying, you know, well, the Lord is my refuge, and he, he allows me to be like that goat up there walking on, on the mountain. You know, right at the, right at the peak of the very edge of things, one misstep and they fall and it's, it's all over with. <laughs> but we have to go to those places because that's where life is lived. We have the Holy Spirit as a guide to be content and be attuned to that. Uh, you know, in, in the end, that's, we live by faith, I guess. Always have, and always will have to. Well, I'm, I'm thankful for this church. Yes, I am too. Yeah, we're seeing some interesting signs. Two services in a row, we've had uh, people joining the church. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're hopeful. <laughs>